are nextsportsart.com and joining us now to give us a he said she said perspective on last night's episode of the ultimate fighter team tate members louis facet and sarah cheesecake morris how you doing guys i'm good i'm good how are you very well louis how you doing out there sarah i'm doing good just woke up <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're getting to, getting you rather early on the west coast there but uh uh, after last night, I was excited to come to work today. Uh, just an incredible, incredible fight. Jessamine Duke and Rocky Pennington. I mean, they, in my opinion, completely upstaged last night's Maya versus Shields card. Louie, how did you see that? Is that your feeling after you saw that? Yeah, I agree. I mean, obviously, I had seen the, the fight live when we were in the house, and I, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I think those are two of the most skilled girls in the house. I mean, besides cheesecake, of course. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, they went out, they left it all out there, and they, they really went for it. Sarah, when you're watching a fight like that, uh, is it uh, impossible just not to be just drawn right into it? I mean, I had goosebumps watching this. They just laid it all on the line. Um, well, like, when we're watching it, it was so close, right? And, of course, we want our team to win, but it's, it's like, crazy when you know both people that are fighting, right? And you want both of them to win but they can't win and then it's such a close fight it was it was pretty insane being there and watching it and off the top of the episode at uh T misha tate brought in uh coach melchor and of course is, is a muay thai background to work with rocky and uh, get her ready for jessamine duke louis do you think that was a difference maker um i really think it was uh, i know they worked on a lot of clinch stuff and in the fight i didn't notice it so much um on the tape i mean like when we played it last night but Whenever uh, Jessamine got the clinch, Rocky was really good at, you know, automatically defending it. Or if she did get in a bad situation with throwing knees, Rocky was immediately throwing back with elbows to her thighs, um, which I saw her and Mel work on, you know, the days leading up to the fight. So I think that, that, I think that definitely was one of the difference makers for sure. Uh, Sarah, did you get to work with Coach Melchor at all? Um, I only got to work with him a little bit. I, I think Rocky was working with him for the most part, and he wasn't there for very long. Okay. But uh, when you watched that fight back, did you see, like Louie did, uh, definitely the influence there and uh, being able to work against uh, a great Muay Thai game like Jessamine Dukes? Um, yeah, I mean, like, he was only there for a day, so how much can you really pick up and use in a fight? I think Rocky's mm -hmm. a great fighter, and I think, I think she would have pulled off the win either way. And when you watch this, uh, does it you know kind of make you wish that Invicta is uh, was bigger than it is right now? Because this is a fight that would be on an Invicta main card. I mean, there's so much great talent coming from that promotion. Uh, Louis, I, when you watch this, do you think, wow, you know, women's fighting, you know, it's not just Ronda Rousey. There's just an incredible amount of incredible female talent out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, speaking of Invicta, I had honestly never seen an Invicta card in my entire life, and. I mean, I really regret that because there are some great fights out there. And, you know, I think a lot of people downplay the female skills just because, you know, oh, they're girls, you know, Ronda Rousey's one-dimensional, Misha Tate's one-dimensional, and they don't see all the, the girls that aren't in the spotlight yet. You know, like girls like Sarah, like Raquel, like Jessamine, like Shayna, all those people have the skills to put on great fights. And I, I, I think it's really sad that we don't actually get to, you know, not, not everyone gets to enjoy those fights. And when you see uh, an Invicta talent like Jessamine Duke and like Rocky Pennington in there, you know, does it um, make you uh, hopeful for the future that Invicta can uh, develop more of this kind of talent? Um, actually, if you watch like their last card and stuff, like they've been putting on phenomenal cards where every single fight has been like could have been a main event, and they've just been completely insane, completely full of talent, and I was just shocked at the level of the women out there in all different weight classes, and they just bring it. It was, they put on amazing shows, so, uh, yeah, I know that we do that. <laughs> Us women are pretty awesome like that, so, so it's, it's cool to see the rest of the world seeing it, though. Absolutely. And uh, we got to see another side of you uh, last night, Sarah. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of a softer side. Uh, we saw the makeup. Uh, we saw the high heels. Uh, Juliana Pena having a little bit of fun with uh, you and Rocky. You didn't look like you are having all that fun of a time, to be quite honest with you. Um, it's not really my thing. <laughs> I, I just wrote my blog, so I said um, in it that the makeup... The makeover for each one of us took longer than the entire episode. Just the makeup part of it. Really? So, so <laughs> like, yeah. So, you guys don't understand being guys, but to look that much not like me, it takes...
takes a really, really long time. And I don't see how women do it. I don't see why they do it or why they force me to do it. But, yeah, I, you know, it's like it's fun for, like, five minutes. But then once it's been, like, an hour and five minutes and they're not even halfway done, you get kind of bored. Uh, what would you think about uh, Rocky and Cheesecake cleaning up, Louie? Uh-huh. I mean, it was it was different. Um, <laughs> they definitely didn't look comfortable in their makeup and, and their high heels, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, and uh, you guys got another outing. Uh, went to a, a nice pool party I saw. Uh, is it uh, in, more interesting just watching it this season when you watch it back that uh, you guys are seemingly given a little bit more outside time than in previous seasons, Louie? Yeah, I mean, it is really nice to get out there because, I mean, that's really one of our only escapes from the house. Otherwise, you're, you know, in the backyard, in the kitchen, you know, it, whatever. You're kind of locked in that house and you're around the same people, you know. So, so to get out and, and, you know, talk to, you know, whoever it is, the bartenders, the waitresses, you know, just, just to kind of hang out and, and get to watch the TV and get to watch the fights, it was a, a really, good, really good time. Yeah. And, uh, Sarah, uh, how much did Anthony Gutierrez have to drink? Um, I didn't see him drinking, but he was really pissing us off. <laughs> I'm guessing a bit, but he sort of has that personality that can piss you off sober too. So, I I have no idea. I uh, I read one recap where it said he was channeling his inner Jamie Yager. Yeah, uh, was it uh, Jamie Yager or was it Yager Bombs, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know who the first one is, but pro I. I don't know. He's such a crazy person that he could be like that sober too. So, so I can't say that he was drunk for that, but he very well could have been. Yeah, and whose idea was it to dump his mattress? Um, I think that might have been my idea. <laughs> I can't remember. We actually um, got up like because he kept sleeping about every twenty minutes and kept doing that to him. So, so he didn't wake us up again after that, which was nice. Uh, Louis, was Anthony annoying anyone else, or was it uh, just he was sticking to the women? No, he was, uh, he was definitely getting on everyone's nerves at that point, I think. Um, you know, when we were at the, the pool party, he was definitely having some, I think he was drinking red wine. He definitely had quite a few glasses, um, you know, which I, I didn't necessarily agree with. You're, you know, you're in there for a chance of a lifetime, and, uh, you know, you're wasting it just because you're immature and want to get a little bit of a buzz, but... Um, you know, yeah, when we got back in the house, he was, you know, in my bedroom while I was trying to sleep. He was, you know, just being annoying, and, um, you know, I think it kind of just came to blows with the girls upstairs. And, uh, Louie, you'd already fought by this point, so are you a little more apt to relax at something like that pool party than you would be if you had a fight coming up? Yeah, it was really nice. Um, I had actually fought, I think, the day before that. I think so we went on the Saturday. Um, so it was nice to just kind of sit back, you know, have a few drinks, have some food, and just kind of... You know, honestly, forget about the game at that point because I, you know, I was out of the, the competition, so it's nice just to kind of kick back and relax. And the Misha Tate Ronda Rousey uh, rivalry continues to build. Uh, and Misha, you know, was kind of taking some shots at Ronda after the fight. It looked like there, but uh, then went over to shake Duke's hand, and then you know, of course, uh, Rousey gave her the uh, finger. You know, uh, Misha, I don't know, I'm not sure I agree with uh, her attitude in that case. I mean, she seems to you know say, "Oh, look at Ronda. She's you know such a you know whatever. I don't want to use the word, but you know, uh, Misha seems to be really just kind of poking the bear a lot. Do you agree with that, Sarah?" Um, yeah, it sort of seems that way. I, I try to stay out of that stuff, though. <laughs> Fair enough, but you, when you're watching it unfold in front of you, uh, how does that make you feel? Me? Yes. Um, I don't know. I just think, I think it's just funny, to be honest. It doesn't really bother me either way. And if I were either one of them, I don't think it would bother me. I think I'd just sort of laugh it off. Louis, uh, do you think that sometimes you're not on The Ultimate Fighter, but you're in a sequel to Mean Girls? <laughs> um, I mean, it did seem that way sometimes. You know, we had some girls crying, and, and then I think the battle between the coaches, they, they played it off as it was a bigger deal than it really was. Um, I think they did a good job of kind of keeping that the fighters from the, the coaches' rivalry. So the stuff that Misha and Ronda did, it was kind of, you know, to me, it, it was kind of unseen, you know. I'd hear about it in practice or whatever, and you say, oh, you know, Ronda did this, Misha did this, but... I honestly haven't seen a good portion of the stuff they did to each other. Like the pranks and stuff, we weren't really around for. You know, the, the flipping off, I personally didn't even notice. You know, so it was, it was me just seeing it just the, for the first time yesterday. And, um, you know, so in the house, it didn't really bother me whatsoever. 
All right, well, another great episode in the books and a great fight set up for next week. Josh Hill and Michael Wooten. Uh, you guys, obviously, uh, teammates of uh, Josh Hill, a uh, Josh Hill friend of this show as well. Lou, you've trained with Josh before. Uh, how excited are you to sit back and actually watch this as a viewer on TV rather than in the, in the gym? Um, it's going to be good. From what I remember, it was a really good fight. Um, you know, Michael Wooten's more of a striker. Josh is more of a grappler. So, again, we're, we're back to that, you know, striker versus a grappler matchup. Um, Obviously, training with Josh, he's super talented, super strong, super tough. So, um, you know, I really look forward to it. Sarah, are you excited for some more Canadian content on the Ultimate Fighter next week? Uh, of course I am, but I'm actually more excited for the week after that. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be you and uh, Peggy Morgan. So uh, next two weeks, uh, some great Canadians, some great fights happening, and uh, some great guests here on In the Cage with Bards. Always a pleasure to talk to you two. Louis, just remind people where they can find you in uh, cyberspace and anything else uh, you want to uh, thank or give a shout-out to. You're more than welcome. Right on. So um, on Twitter, it's MMA. Same thing on Instagram, MMA. Um Obviously, I want to thank everybody at Wham at the gym. Um, and actually, I just want to throw out there, DC Mouth Guards, I think they're from New Mexico, are hooking me up with a really sweet mouth guard. Um, it's going to look like I got some, some like diamond grills in my mouth. Uh, so I'm pretty excited for that. You know, kind of brings out my little, my little gangster side. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. So thank you, DC Mouth Guard. All right, Sarah, where can people find you in cyberspace? Um, on Twitter, follow me at Sarah Cheesecake. Uh, like my fan page on Facebook, the Sarah Cheesecake Morris. And buy my shirts at fightforsomething.ca. They are great shirts. All right, we will be back here on In the Cage with Bards with more great MMA content. So keep it locked here to nextsportstar.com. Yeah.